can't be a Gnostic if all you do is accept what someone else told you. And I think there are a lot of people like that in society, and they find themselves in all kinds of churches. The Gnostic church is, I think, simply a way of providing an opportunity for those maybe to come together with other people of like mind. But that doesn't imply that it's, that it's going to be a church to, to uh, uh, grapple with the, the Christian church for uh, dominance in our society. Uh, the Gnostic church in the early centuries uh, didn't do so well. I suspect that a Gnostic church today wouldn't do any better if it were truly a political uh, uh, struggle. Holy Spirit, celestial bride and revealed... These are the first Gnostics in history who are free to express their heresy. They do not face repression or slaughter. Their names do not belong in the famous tradition of Valentinus, Hermes Trismegistus, Gilabert de Castro, Pico della Mirandola, John Dee and Carl Jung. Today, they believe that Gnosis has value for all humanity, despite its checkered history. Gnosis itself can, the same way that it cannot be held in a book, it cannot be destroyed either. So it does not matter if all Gnostics are killed and all the documents are destroyed, there will be Gnostics always. The most powerful theme of Gnosticism is the sense that men and women are outsiders in a meaningless world, but that they can overcome the troubles and materialism of everyday life by ignoring the false images of the Demiurge, the creator of the earth, and finding the common identity between their own soul and the divinity of God. Such an idea is clearly echoed in modern existentialist philosophy. The term alienation is not foreign to us. Uh, a man does not feel so comfortably at home in the world that surrounds him. Certainly one common feature and also uh, some consciousness of a crisis and um, even nihilistic tendencies uh, and an estrangement. Gnostic tradition offers an answer to the atheists or the agnostics question, did a good God create a world full of pain and suffering? Modern life for countless millions is estranged from hope. War, hunger and natural disasters afflict some. Drugs, brutality, AIDS and disability oppress others. The Gnostic does not blame God for the punishment but seeks to know God in order to accept the unavoidable tragedy inherent in life itself. Every new human life is seen as a certain source of distress, mingled with the possibility of hope for the individual who finds a way to salvation through that knowledge of the heart. I think about Orthodox Christian tradition, which says that suffering and pain come into the world because of human sin and because of original sin. You know, there, there, there would not be any suffering of the innocent, according to St. Augustine. Valentinus's view strikes me as, as, a, as, a, as an interesting alternative when he says that suffering is part of the fabric of the human race, in the, the, part of the fabric of existence into which we're born. Uh, not so simple as to trace it to human fault. The two outstanding moods or attitudes of the Gnostic mind and of distress and hope. It expresses in a certain way a, a central experience of the Gnostic mind, namely of being strangers in a strange world uh, into which the soul or the spirit does not originally belong and from which it has to extricate itself. And God stands, the true God, as distinct from the creator God, from the demiurge, um, stands also in the relation of, of an alien to this world. And his message appears in the world as something from without. Without faith or without gnosis, the message of the true God remains alien and abstract. For the Gnostic, 
the world is an illusion which only spiritual vision can make real and meaningful. The world is seen by most of these Gnostics as a place where you have to become conscious. Sin is a word that is not to be found in that dictionary. It is all about ignorance, being unconscious of yourself, and then the appeal of Christ makes yourself conscious of what you are. And therefore, the world is there to prepare mankind for full consciousness. Every branch of Christianity looks to the second coming of Christ, whether in symbolic or literal terms. For the Gnostics, Christ the Twin is always alongside, showing the way to the knowledge of the heart, which is their salvation. Christ's message of Gnosis is to be heard even amid the hectic human chaos of New York City. forth and unto me did the all extend split a piece of wood and I am there lift up the stone and you will find me there the kingdom will not come by waiting for it will not be a matter of saying here it is or there it is Rather, the kingdom of the Father is spread out upon the earth, and men do not see it. Woe to you, godless ones, who have no hope who rely on things that will not happen. Woe to you who hope in the flesh and the prison that will perish. Your hope is set upon the world, and your God is this life. You are corrupting your soul. Woe to you for the fire that burns in you, for it is insatiable. And woe to you for the wheel that turns in your mind. Woe to you, captives. For you are bound in caverns. You laugh. In mad laughter you rejoice. Some have entered the kingdom of heaven laughing, and they have come out. For 2,000 years, the Gnostic pulse has been beating. Men and women have pursued a deeper experience of their spiritual nature than what is offered formally by faith through the church. The authors of the Gnostic texts, and all those who have followed them in Christian history, have been denounced as heretics, and some have paid with their lives. It is those who are awake I have addressed. I tell you this that you may know yourselves. If you know the truth, the truth will make you free. Give 
call you now Got a moon above me But no one to love me Love a man, oh where can you be? within a man of light and he lights up the whole world if he does not shine he is darkness do you dare to spare the flesh you for whom the spirit is an encircling wall if you consider how long the world existed before you and how long it will exist after you you will find your life to be one single day and your sufferings one single hour for the good will not enter the world scorn death therefore and take thought for life Remember my cross and my death, and you will live. In 1945, the year of liberation and catastrophe, the Gnostic tradition's earliest traces were discovered in the Egyptian desert, and the Gnostic idea has become widely available to the people of a freer, more dangerous world. A timeless message for the human spirit has emerged from the silence of human history. Who is it that will rain a refreshing dew upon you to extinguish the mass of fires in you? Who is it who will cause the sun to shine upon you and disperse the darkness in you and hide the darkness and polluted water? Henceforth, waking or sleeping, remember that you have seen the Son of Man and spoken with him in person and listened to him in person. If it is true that life is tragic and not moral, then Gnosticism gives a better answer to certain questions than the traditional morals of Christianity. Because you see then uh, that whatever you do, it is always wrong, and you have peace with that. You can accept the tragical aspect of existence and be tolerant towards the tragedy of others.